gentlemen, welcome back once again. How are we doing tonight? Welcome back. What up? <laughs> Fantastic. Best week of my life. <laughs> I know that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honestly, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Just happy to be here for real. Like, I didn't think I was even going to be able to go live. It's like Thursday or Friday again. So, it's yeah, when you have alive. a. When you have a bad bad week, uh, computer wise and football wise, um, yeah, that's uh, that that's the double dipper right there. A oh, triple, dude! Fantasy football, Cowboys, and actual computer. Just had the week from hell. Yep. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to the THF Extra Point. We are in week two, so second season, episode two. Uh, how was that week of football, guys? I titled the stream "Welcome to Upsetville." I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I saw some upsets, and we're gonna talk about them for sure. <laughs> yeah, a lot of upsets for sure. I mean, I just five off the top of my head, and I didn't even go through every game to see which ones because I I felt like I felt like a lot of game. There were some games that were kind of hard to pick for me this week, but. Overall, Pickums, it felt like it was going to be a really easy week, and it was anything but. If you look at the Pickums chart, which we'll pull that up in in a little while here, but uh, I think it was nine right one won the week. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, um, this week was rough. Definitely, the first two weeks have been rough just for injuries. You know, upsets, everything like that. Picks, it feels like kind of everything. I'd have to go back and, and take a look at our our week two ep, uh, uh, last year. But it doesn't feel... It feels like last year kind of started off really weird, too. Did, did it not? Oh, yeah. Injuries, for sure, every year. But maybe it's just me. But for picks and everything, it's felt off compared to the beginning of last year, for sure. I mean, think about the beginning of last year with the Bengals. Yeah, they went 0-4 to yeah, start last year. Exactly. Like, Bengals were Super Bowl favorites to start. Everybody was expecting them to go out there and be the best passing offense in the NFL. They started 0-4. Yep. And this year, they took everybody out of our survivor pool on week one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was devastating. Uh, it, was something like, it was something like 80, 81% of players in survivor pool were eliminated after week one because so many, so many people faded New England and picked Cincinnati, which was God love were, trap game. You were one of them, weren't you? No, no, no. You and I are the last two left. Uh, no, there's three of us left. Mm, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but she gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, I don't even have a graphic for it. So yeah, she picked the uh, Philadelphia. Uh, oh yeah, never mind. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, it's just you and I. <laughs> it's you yeah, and I. It are makes it a little easier though. I, I don't know how many of our viewers are in survivor pools. Um but uh when so many players are eliminated early on, you're a you're able to start picking safer bets at that point. Um unfortunately oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of people picked Baltimore um in, uh, over this past week, which was also a mistake. But uh, you know, a lot of people want to jump right in and pick the Bills. They want to pick the Chiefs. They want to pick Cincinnati. Um, and it's, it's, it's not always the best bet. But yeah. now, that, now that there's so few people, you can, you can pick people that – you can pick a team that you think is, going to, is, is a likely winner. Um, I probably wouldn't waste the Chiefs right now, but you can pick somebody that, that's bound to yeah. determine to be a, a, you know, a winning team, a playoff team, a winning team. For sure, for sure. Well, the week started off with the uh, Buffalo Bills and the Dolphins, and uh, Tua dying. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, outside of Tua dying, uh, I think that game went exactly <laughs> like most people expected. Or did you guys think that Miami was going to uh, do anything different? That was the only game I got to watch all week, and I'm going to say I expected it to be a much higher scoring game, but <laughs> to a dying dude, that's so fucking hilarious because it's so true. Like as soon as I saw it, man, the first thing I thought was, "Wait, you ain't watch Hard Knocks? You ain't yeah. watch Hard Knocks? Everybody watch Hard Knocks." What's the first thing they taught Caleb Williams in Hard Knocks? Slip and slide, dog legs first. What are you doing? 
How many yeah. times has Tua already been injured? How many times has he already gotten concussions? And exactly like Ray did, he throwed up gang signs on that one injury, dude. There's, like it was bad. There's really no excuse for it because of any quarterback, he should know better. Dude, and he already had the first down. He didn't even like it wasn't like it was like a fourth and five and he needed to dive forward and get those extra yards. He had the first, dude. What was he even diving for? Slide at that point, dude. Like yeah, that's crazy. That was horrible. And I know horrible. I know we got a full energy report coming up earlier, but they have already uh, pulled him out. They're putting him on IR. He's on and, IR. Yeah, yeah, so he he'll be uh and, and he did I I thought I saw he already uh released a statement that he's not considering retirement, which blows my freaking mind. <laughs> he's going to be Troikman, too. Yeah, I, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, this guy needs to retire right now. He's yeah. going to get concussed again, guaranteed. Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially with the way he plays. He's a scrambling quarterback who dives headfirst every time. Like yeah. That wasn't even on, like man. crazy. It just like it looked like he kind of hit his helmet on the guy's knee. Yeah. Or Hamlin's knee or whatever, and then he just... Uh, I didn't yeah, even look at that it. So, and I know that after you get concussed multiple times, you get more sensitive to it. But that's very sensitive, uh, you know, since you already have a helmet on and everything like that. Of course, yeah. from our perspective, it might look a bit lighter than what he was actually go going through. But still, compared to some people's, because there was that one hit that he took where it looked really bad, where the lineman like slammed his head on the ground. It's like that. I can 100 percent understand. You're getting concussed after that one. This hit, it just it looked very minor, so it looks concerning, honestly. Yeah, this I was actually more worried about his like his neck on this one, but um, but yeah, I saw a TikTok video that had like every one of his concussions, and I thought this one was pretty mild compared to the, uh, some oh, yeah. of the other ones he's had. Yeah, how many he's had? Yeah, but unfortunately, each t each each time you have a concussion, the damage you do with subsequent concussions is worse. Right. Nope. I was a wrestler in high school, and I had two concussions prior to my senior year, and my wrestling career was ended with a third concussion. Um, I was dropped in my head, uh, and as a baby, no, that, that was me. <laughs> well, those are the other two. Uh, wrong one, wrong one. But, uh, but it's not something to mess around with, especially yeah. with talk of CTE and things like that. Uh, uh, same with the guardian helmets. The guardian helmets, they're they're good in, in theory. Uh, you know, they're the big, goofy, padded ones that go over the, yeah. the actual helmet. You should be wearing one, by the somebody, way. Somebody actually wore one in an NFL game. Did you well, see that? A, a handful yeah. of players are. Um, yeah. Patriots players are, are for example. Um, but the thing is, it, it doesn't make it, 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 it somewhat le lessens the impact. But the problem is, you can't pad the inside of your skull. Yeah. That's and that's where the issue is. The, that's what so many people say. Yeah. Bouncing off, you know. Like you put as much padding on there as you want, but yeah, the brain it's going to hit the bone on the inside. It's going to be hitting your skull. That's what causes it. Right, right, yeah. So I mean that that I I think a lot of the the pad thing and the NFL approving them to wear those <laughs> uh, goofy helmet covers, like I I think it's just optics. The NFL wants to be seen, like they care. Um, you know, especially after all the, uh, the CTE, like the, the hoopla years ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm like, I, don't, I don't think it does a whole lot much more than the helmet does. I'm like nothing against like the concussion. I know it's really bad <laughs> concussions. Obviously, bless you. Obviously, cush, their concussions are horrible and I wish we could find a way to stop them. You never want people to get injured in the NFL, especially seriously like that. But like the way they try to stop concussions with the helmets and changing the way defenders have to tackle throwing out more penalties finding people more it's not helping at all with concussions and if anything it's causing more injuries because people are still getting concussions but since they've changed the rules where you can't like there's massive penalties just for even touching a person's helmet everybody's doing the hip tackles now where they wrap their arms around their hips and then they go dead weight and they, people are getting their ankles messed up. Their legs are getting torn. All these knee injuries, these ankle injuries, these MCL, ACL tears, all these people going out over these last two years. And nobody wants to talk about that. The NFL is like, hey, concussions, right? <laughs> That's what's like, nothing against concussions. But, man, y'all are trying to change the rules so much that y'all are, are causing massive injuries in other ways now. 
Yeah, I guess time will tell. It's all a, it's a, it's a never ending experiment because obviously the player safety is is something that they they claim to be uh you know it trying to improve with all these. So I mean, we'll see what ends up happening. I mean, um, it's a dangerous game. People are going to get hurt. You know, yeah, people no, no. are running super fast, tackling, hitting each other hard. Whether no, they, they go for the head, they go for their legs. I know. No matter where you hit somebody, it's going to hurt. And if they don't plant themselves right, anybody can get hurt in any way. So, I don't know. I feel like they just need to stop trying to mess with the way uh, players have been doing things for the last 60, 70 years. Well, what, well besides the, uh, the uh, you know, Tua's funeral on Thursday, what uh, what else? What other games? What what games do we want to start with today on the uh, on the old agenda from Sunday? Uh, do we want to go ahead and just rip the band aid off and talk about the Cowboys, or can we do, can we just go ahead and skip that one? <laughs> I am personally not. Uh, and this is to the I don't know y'all three already know this, but to the chat, I'm not going to have much to say this week. By the way, for most of the game, that's why I kind of talked a lot about the Thursday game. My computer busted five minutes before the games on Sunday, y'all. So I. Didn't see much of this week, so I'm going to mute my microphone and let these three guys chat for a little bit. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that did not look good for the Cowboys, not at all. Yeah, it's pretty rough, and that was that was the one one and only game I watched at noon because uh, we were out to eat and had the Cowboy game on. I didn't I didn't have the ability to watch Red Zone at the same time, so I, I missed. There were ten games at noon, and I was wrapped up in the Cowboys embarrassing defeat at the hands of the red hot freaking new orleans saints um they are they are killing it they're that's two weeks in a row 40 plus points for the saints and say what you want about them doing it last week the cowboys are supposed to be a top end defense in this league and they did it again yeah they got me negative points in one of my leagues yeah i think uh Navy, you have you have the Cowboys defense in our fantasy league, right? Yeah, I uh, no offense to the Cowboys defense. I'm actually waiver wiring, picking up another defense this week because we already have not looked good. I think they got me ten points, eleven points, or something this last week. And uh, yeah, uh, they're playing Baltimore this week, so I'm saying I'm going to be starting them this week on fantasy. Yeah, that's uh yeah, I don't know what's going. I don't know what the. I don't oh, know what the, and I paid look- ten dollars to keep them on our fantasy football oh. year. By the way, they, they were one of my keepers. <laughs> yeah, because they were so freaking good. They were my like second most highest uh, point score on my yeah, team. Yeah, I, I, I paid to keep. So two I paid ones. to keep them. So, oh. So let's not talk about keepers. Yeah, we won't talk about keepers right now. Because my uh, mine is dead. Oh, you mean like <laughs> like Christian McCaffrey for me, who's on IR now? Yeah. Yeah. Injury report, we'll get to <laughs> later, later. Y'all keep going. Y'all keep going. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I don't uh I don't know what's wrong with the Cowboys, but it's on offense and defense right now. Um C D Lamb and Dak kind of started to to vibe a little bit, but they, they still don't look like they're uh on the same page a hundred percent yet. Um and then uh Dak made some poor decisions uh in this one but the the biggest the biggest uh issue right now is i think what's going on with the dallas defense because there's there's too many too many uh big names on that team to be given up 45 points 44 points uh, in a game if you ask me yeah the saints are starting off on fire i mean alvin Kamara is looking fantastic right now didn't he drop like four touchdowns against us it was ridiculous. It was right. three, I think. Uh, he had four. He had three or four last week, though. Didn't two? Didn't he? I mean, he's like the highest scoring RB right now. And and Alvin Kamara had four touchdowns against us. Yeah. He had twenty carries for one hundred fifteen yards, three touchdowns, and then he had two catches for sixty five yards and a touchdown. Oh, it must have been three that he did the week before, because I think he went off the week before also. Yeah, yeah he's he's destroying, single handedly destroying people and. In fantasy football right now yeah uh, in one of my leagues i was lowest scorer uh but one of my other one of my other uh league mates uh, uh up until sun sunday evening alvin kamara had scored more points than his entire team 
So that's it was insane. Rough. That's like uh, coming out of nowhere too. That's like a revival for him because honestly, he wasn't uh, he he wasn't all that great the last couple years that I can think of. I mean, he was serviceable and fantasy wise, but you know, he wasn't putting up gaudy numbers or anything by any means. Not like not like old Kamara, you know, back in the day. He he he's always been a consistent performer though. Like he's been, yeah, when he's, on the he's field, not, right? he's not, he's not putting up 30 bombs, but you know, he's always, he's generally double digits. In yeah. Pants. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Um, the other, the, the, the other upset that happened at noon was in, in some people out there may not agree that it was an upset. So I, I'm kind of curious to hear some thoughts on it because Ray, if I'm not mistaken, you picked them in the pickums to win, uh, the bucks over the lions. Yeah, the so the the Bucks laying seven points was crazy. That was I, I don't know what Vegas was was cooking with that one, because like if we're looking at a point spread, for example, New England Seattle, which we'll get to, that was only a three point spread, uh, three and a half point spread, and it was it was it, the Patriots covered, um, and they were they in public. If you look at the public money, the public favored New England heavily. It was the same thing with Tampa Bay Detroit. Uh, it was pretty. It was, it was more evenly split than it was against New England. But seven points, but forty percent of the money was on Tampa. So the the spread didn't really match, and a lot of people well, are. Go ahead. Lions were a seven and a half point favorite. Um, I mean, you usually get, you usually kind of get a bonus three three points for being at home. So really, they were only a four and a half point favorite if you think of that's it like still, that. That's still high. That's still you think a so? very high, yeah, it's still a very high margin, um, and I get it. It's a home game, but it's still early in the season. And again, with forty percent of the money being on Tampa from the public, it, it it just didn't really make sense for that. See, I bet it at seven. Um, it depends on the market you looked at, because getting seven and a half, that even that was high. If you if you found it at seven and a half, good. That's uh, I would have bet that twice. Um, but it just didn't make sense to me. Like uh, I I really didn't see Detroit winning by a touchdown. Hmm. They can keep it yep. close, but just with I, how Baker's been performing this this year and, and everything seems to be going pretty well. Um, granted, uh, you know everyone was riding high on Tampa coming out of Week One because they faced the New York football, uh, the Washington football team, who are serviceable at best. But yeah. Tampa Bay is nothing to be slept on, and the NFC oh. South is going to be more competitive than people are thinking. Everyone thinks that NFC South is just an easy division. You have you have a lot well, of last year. not anymore. Yeah, last, <laughs> last year not year. anymore. The Falcons <laughs> were like kind of iffy week one, but then coming week two right. with that upset versus the Eagles, now they're looking like they're starting to pick things up too. So, yeah, it's going to be competitive for sure. Yeah, the uh, um, I you know Tampa Bay, Detroit won a good game in week one too. So. And I, I guess I, maybe I'm just weigh, weighing it out a little bit too much uh, on last year's performance. I mean, you had Detroit, which was one of the best teams in the league, uh, and Super Bowl favorite through some of the some of the year. But if you if you don't count San Francisco, and uh, they finished the season what thirteen and four last year, and Tampa Bay squeaked by and won their division nine and eight, and so. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, and then they kept, and it, they kept it within, pose- within one possession in the in the divisional round. Yeah, um, Baker threw Mayfield threw an interception on the last drive, and that's what sealed the game. But, um, you know, so something to look at with Detroit. Um, be careful. A, a lot of people buy in very heavily on these teams. Uh, Minnesota a couple years ago was another was another one. Um, the Lions play 14 of their 17 games in the Dome this year. Mm. So they're going to have a really good regular season. Don't get me wrong. Um, but there's a big risk that they fly a little too close to the sun. I'm not I'm not picking them to go on a, a long playoff run. You never know. I mean, they might the, the, there there is a good opportunity uh, there is a good chance they get right back to where they were. But don't be surprised if they get bounced in the first or second round. Yeah, I mean, you know, I 
it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I can I can get on board with that. Um, I think the NFC South is going to be is going to be a, a tough division this year. So, you know, everyone's riding high on the riding high on Detroit, which rightfully so. They're they're a juggernaut team, but um, it, it a lot of pickums are going to get messed up if you sleep on the NFC South. Aside okay. from Carolina, Wait. you can pick you can pick against Carolina every game, unless every game. Andy, Andy Dalton is, <laughs> unless Andy Dalton comes back as the second coming of Christ. You can absolutely bet against Carolina. They they are first pick watch throughout the whole season. Dude, I'm going to tell you about Carolina, man. Like I was saying at the beginning of the season, before they took a crap, um, I think their offense is going to be decent enough, especially with their new rookie running back and new rookie wide receiver <laughs> and Deontay Johnson. They have enough to make it to where Andy Dalton could actually do something and at least have a decent record with the Panthers. So. I feel like there could be some upsets there. I like for the parlay later. I'm gonna take one on Andy Dalton. I'm telling y'all, it's it's not oh gonna boy. be bad. You're oh betting no. on a dude that doesn't oh have a soul. No. What the hell? That's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the red rifle, baby. TCU greatness. Uh, okay, so Andy gonna on be to slinging that D. The uh, <laughs> Andy prob- Dalton. Probably the biggest upset of the week. Is got to be Minnesota over San Francisco, right? Unless you're a Vikings fan, then it makes sense. But uh, no, 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 no. Mm. Any honest, any honest Vikings yeah, it's fan an upset. knows that they aren't on San Francisco. They weren't level. supposed to be able to do that. I don't think anyone would have, <laughs> in their right mind, would have predicted the Vikings to win that. But that's awesome, though. Yeah, I like seeing that. That's, I beat that's TV, a game I didn't not even shocked. Look at. <laughs> that that's I, a game I did not even look at in terms of like and I, I, say too, I I didn't even watch the game. I saw like Justin Jefferson got me like a ninety seven yard touchdown and, then, and I'm oh, like okay. Hell yeah, Justin Jefferson's gonna carry me this week. And then I saw that he totaled at the end of the game like 130 yards and one touchdown. So I was like, oh, so the rest of the game he had like three catches for 30 yards and then one 97 yard catch for a touchdown. And that's they won by like six. So <laughs> he didn't last very long is the problem. We'll yeah, well he got uh point. Yeah, he's he's uh he's one of the people that's on the on the report, oh, trust right? Me. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I know. <laughs> um, and then we got uh, so yeah, that was. I mean, is San Francisco a shell of them, themselves without CMC? I don't think so. It's a downgrade, but there is no excuse. For anybody on the offense to not be able to do it. But I will give it to them. The Vikings defense has held it up the past two games. They have held it up. And people were concerned about Jefferson's, you know, output this year having a new quarterback situation, but they're making it work. As you know, 49ers offense goes, it doesn't matter. You had Debo Samuel, Ayuk, you know, you got Brock freaking Purdy, the man himself, the get the win to the Super Bowl last year. You have a crack defense. You got everything. Your team's stacked. What? You don't have CMC, so what? Jordan Mason's still going off. Yeah, you I got don't another 100-yard game. I excuses at all. Yeah. Not, they just not, straight uh, up lost. They, yeah, they looked all around. Yeah, I'm just looking at the stats. Brock Purdy, he only, what, threw eight incomplete passes, 319 yards, one for one. And then Jordan Mason, 20 carries, 100 yard and a touchdown. Kittle, 76 yards and a touchdown. Debo, over 100 yards. Like, hey, Yuke's been the they all looked good, man. For me. Uh, he, he got his money. He can sit down now. He can relax. Right. He doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah. He's oh, wait, been are we talking to Sean Watson already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to his ass. He's not on the injury report, but he needs to be. But, the, uh, yeah, Ayuk has uh, definitely been a disappointment as somebody that has him in a, in a couple leagues in fantasy. That's kind of – I've been. He'll I've do been, better in the following weeks. Yeah, so. I – I should hope so. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> I get, Debo's I see what you injured, mean. and yeah. they were already saying Ayuk exactly. was going to be slow out the gate since he hasn't been at practice and everything like that. So it makes sense. True, true, true. That for sure. What other games uh, did you guys catch and find interesting this week? Oh, <laughs> football upset. That was a big upset. Yep. Which one? 
Monday night. Oh Monday yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday, Monday night. Falcons. Philly was definitely another one. Oh, uh, before we get to Monday though, uh, what about uh, Cards over Rams? Hey, I picked the Cardinals, man. I've been saying. I didn't pick the Cardinals, but uh, I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. is him. He is a yeah, he's him. him. I think that Kyler Murray is not just playing to his potential, but he's playing, I think, better than any other season so far that I've seen of because he's making better decisions. There's some kind of iffy ones week one, but they absolutely – dominated the Rams. I picked them to win, but I didn't pick them to go out there and score 40 points. So everything I feel like for the Cardinals is going to be going up from here. I think how they're looking right now, they're looking like a pretty <coughs> deadly team. So if they can keep this momentum and everything, James Connor's looking good. Kyler's looking good. If Marvin Harrison keep getting open like he was, he's going to be looking good. The offense is going to be popping, man. If anything, they should be able to, to catapult off of this when – and have more confidence going forward and play and play like play better. Even if, even if they ultimately end up losing a lot of games that, you know, at the beginning of the year, most people would have had them losing anyway. Um, I think they'll actually be competitive in those games. Whereas I think preseason, we'd probably just assume they weren't going to be all that great. I will say too, we're, we're streaming here for the future. Just so y'all know, when doing picks, the Rams, they have like one of the worst O lines this year out of anybody. Probably the worst O line out of every team right now. Even worse than the Giants last year. Matthew Stafford keeps getting freaking sacked, man. The Cardinals defense is not that good to be sacking them that many times. Right now, from the past two games, is terrible. Matthew Stafford's getting beat up out there. So I'm just putting that out. He's not young Matthew Stafford anymore. No, he's not. Once upon a time, he could run for his life. And but uh, nowadays, I don't know. How did the uh, how did the Baltimore O line look this last week? Because I didn't get to watch. It. I know they were garbage. It was, it's like Baltimore's O line wasn't even there. We've won. Game. It was an awful game. Did they look like trash again? Oh yeah. Uh, I think Baltimore. Honestly, I didn't like. I, said, I didn't get to watch this week, so I didn't see the other one. But if Baltimore's O line looked like trash again, I think they have the worst offensive line in the NFL right now. Uh, Patriots are pretty bad. Ask me how I know. <laughs> they really threw in the end. I'm not gonna lie. Lamar yeah. Jackson's passing man is something different. He's the yeah, he's he, a light switcher. He, he can either be super hot or super cold. He gave me that uh, that last second four yard dash and just came up just short of my parlay. And like they had likely, and he was going off the first week, but they just stopped using him as much. Like I, just, I just don't understand. He's a he's a stud player. Use them more. Use your studs. Keep Safe Flower active. Keep Likely active. Still keep Mark Andrews active a bit in there too. He's still good, but get Likely in there more in the passing game because you saw what he did last week already, and then this week they lose. They didn't even use him that much. So I don't know if it was just how the game played out. If he was getting covered more, I didn't get to see as much of that one. But like the Raiders. I don't know, man. That's a crazy loss. I definitely didn't expect that one. That's a, that's another one of those upsets this week. Is... Survivor pools. Yeah, dude. I literally put money on that game. I mean, it was the ninth worst defense in the NFL against the rush against Lamar Jackson. And not only did they beat the Ravens, but they held Lamar Jackson to like forty rushing yards, something like that. Like the hell. Yeah, I had some daily fantasy, you know, DFS plays that didn't turn out too well because of uh, Lamar Jackson. Couple, I think I had him on too, his rush yards on a couple of them. It's uh, like, dude, ask me if I would have put money on that. And it's like, oh, I did. <laughs> That's how sure I was about that. I did put yeah. money on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I was uh, extremely surprised on this game. I was really surprised that the Colts didn't bring it out versus the Packers because – the Packers yeah, have back, yeah, back, one of my survivor pools. They have a backup quarterback yeah. and Anthony Richardson. They didn't win against Houston last week, but they still looked really good. Anthony Richardson looked really good in the rushing and in the passing. I thought that they were going to destroy the Packers, and then they go out there and lose. I'm like, what the hell happened, dude? I just yeah. don't. I just don't get it, man. Yeah, that was another one. In fact, I, we've talked about a lot of games so far. Let's uh, let's let me go ahead and pull up the pickums. 
while we're while we're wrapping up <laughs> talking about last week's. Which, by the way, since you're pulling this up anyway, I'm honestly surprised. I didn't realize it until the pigums were like done with. Like whenever I got my computer working today and I got on there and looked at the pigums, that I was the only one that picked Cleveland to beat Jacksonville. Like I really just. Cleveland has the type of team that I thought could easily beat Jacksonville. And after getting was I the, a whooping was I like the they did, I think and so. I, yeah. I was the only one to pick Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's I was. I was like so surprised about that man. Cleveland was coming off a hard loss. They got a one of the best defenses in the NFL. And they're going against Jacksonville. Nobody like going against not one person. <laughs> I'm with you. Like not one. I mean, I personally would have picked Tampa Bay to beat Detroit, but not one other person in our pick'em thought Tampa Bay Nobody would win. Uh, I picked against picked Jacksonville. Or I mean, I picked picked Jacksonville because, um, yeah, yeah, Cleveland has a, has a great defense, but I don't have any faith in that offense whatsoever. Not with uh, Deshaun Watson, none, none whatsoever. And so that's where, especially after watching him. I mean, obviously, we got close and personal with him uh, in, in when he played Dallas in Week One, and it was like. That guy was terrible, and Awful. I just didn't think I just didn't think there was any way, even with Cleveland's defense, that they could beat Jacksonville. It's because I, we banned masseuses at the Cowboys <laughs> yeah. Stadium, so he wasn't able to get into the right mindset before the Cowboys game. But apparently, uh, against Jacksonville, he was able to get a good masseuse in there. Yeah. I will say um, <laughs> it's over for Christian Kirk, man. It's officially Brian Thomas season. Yeah, don't don't, uh, don't get me started on. Kirk is a little little bit washed. They just need to keep giving the ball to Brian Thomas, and they'll be all right. Their offense looked really good in the first week, which is why I picked them. I mean, that is all we have to go off of in the first place. You know, the Browns' defense most likely a lot better than Jags, but I still expected them to win that. You know, random thing as I'm looking at this with the Chicago, me kind of. Just the whole Caleb Williams situation after such a bad week one. Again, I, this is just off what I watched today off the Fantasy Football Podcast, but apparently the Chicago Bears have the worst offense in the entire NFL right now after this loss this week, and that's behind like other teams that are trash teams. Apparently Chicago has the worst offense in the NFL right yeah, now. Yeah, they do, yep. 100%. And, and, and look yeah. at me. I was big on Cole Komet. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cole Komet's going to kill it, dude. He is. We're yeah. really going to have to be patient on the um, fantasy outlook on the Bears because yeah. Caleb Williams is a slow starter. And he honestly hasn't been rushing the ball as much as I thought he would like Jaden Daniels so far. So his fantasy points hasn't been there either along with it. At least with Jaden Daniels, you have that rushing upside and touchdowns. Yeah. But Caleb Williams, you know, just riding my bench so far this season – but the Bears' defense looked really good and is really what won them the first game. And if Houston played any worse, it would have won them the second game. So if Caleb Williams can even just step it up just a little bit and be mediocre for that team, their defense will probably win them a good amount of games, to be honest. Hey, for the next two weeks in prize picks, I only need them to get a half a yard. Okay. So Exactly. <laughs> My problem hey, with prize picks is the other people doing what I need them to do. Yeah. Real quick, time out for a second. I got uh, Until Death coming in with a raid. Thank you so much, Until Death. Welcome to the THF Extra Point Podcast. Welcome, Raiders, and I appreciate the uh, raid. Hope you had a great stream. Uh, don't don't uh, be shy. Stick around. Talk some football with us. Um, yeah, I, I think we were all pretty high on the Bears in the preseason show that we did two weeks ago, but that has Not me. quickly changed. Hey, it's still week two, so I still stand by what I said until at least week six, and we can start talking hey, about it. I was the only one. I put the Bears at the bottom of our list of teams, and then they actually got moved up because remember Wacko at the start, right before we released them, you were like, hey, we're going to cut out these bottom two sections because it'll look better for the, the yeah. screen. So I just took him from the very bottom and just moved him up with the rest. But he was at the very bottom for me to be getting enough fits to him. But he's got a massive amount of pressure. And yeah, it's his rookie year, dude. They have like, a long way to go. Yeah, so, exactly. Give him a I year have, or two. I think he'll be a top end quarterback right I'm now. Because I, have, I have a dude in two weeks and he hasn't done shit. Um, but like, it's fine. It's growing pains. <laughs> it's it's going to. Yeah. 
it takes some time. It's not. It's gonna it's take not a minute for him. Exactly. Look, no matter how good these players are, the, ignore the MSJs, ignore the Xavier Worthies, uh, exor- ignore the Jaden Daniels within reason. Um, CJ Stroud. These players do have to adjust to the NFL. Yep. It doesn't matter how good they were in college; they have to adjust to the NFL. It take a couple of weeks. No one is no one is the same. It takes time. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna clear out my rookies just because they're not performing right now. Exactly. Yeah, no. It's a long season. That's the worst thing you can do is yes, overreact to the first two weeks. Yeah, right? two like, weeks. Man. Fantasy football, real life. Like it's only week two. There's 18 weeks in the, in a regular season. You know, there's plenty of time uh, for a lot of teams to turn it around if they're starting 0 and 2. I mean, a lot of people make a big deal about the 0 and 2, like because it's like this. You know, it's this curse, but plenty of teams have made the playoffs uh, starting off 0-2. You Thank know? you, Wacko. I appreciate those kind words because as of right now, I'm pretty sure I'm one of the only teams in our fantasy football league with 0-2. Oh, now, to be, fair, you, Wacko, to be fair, I was talking that. about real-life yeah. football. I don't give a <laughs> shit what you were talking about. You just said that teams that start 0-2 can still make it to the playoffs. Y'all heard it from Wacko, okay? So I'll be making the playoffs. I ain't got it. And you're done. <laughs> Season's over, folks. Go home. <laughs> uh, CMC is out for how long? Oh, well, we'll get we'll get to the injury report, right? <laughs> uh, Cincinnati almost uh, gave KC for a run for the money there too. That almost ended up being a uh, well. Would would you have called that an upset if C- Cincinnati had pulled that off? Yeah. They're the Super Bowl winners. It's a hundred percent upset. Oh hell yeah! Bengals win. Yeah, hundred percent. Not think so. No. Why not? Uh, Ray? I think so. Oh, good. Uh, I mean, at this point in the season, yeah, because the the Bengals always start slow. But I, I'm I'm a firm believer that Joe Burrow is the is is the the rival for the the rival in waiting for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, they're not a bad team at all for sure. They're, They're going to figure team. it out with with the Jamar Chase stuff, um, but uh, divisional games like that, I did not. I, I don't think it's going to be. The only or, reason why I said that I would have thought it was an upset is the fact that with the roster right now, with the whole contract issue with Jamar Chase right now, you figure he's probably playing fifty percent of best, and then they don't even have T Higgins playing with him either. Like, they got no Joe Mixon behind him anymore, so he's got no real running back, no real pressure. He's got at best one one wide receiver. He's got Jamar Chase to throw it to. That's it. Like, just yeah. right now, like, I, I almost look at it like you were just saying, give him a little time. Like, let, let T. Higgins get healthy. Let Jamar Chase get to 100%. Yeah. Maybe yeah, figure out their backfield a little bit with the run game. The yeah, other, I think they're a top end team easily. On the other side of that coin, recency bias. I have going to the playoffs this year. Recency bias is real. We're used to them. You know, we're we're still in the mindset of the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl, and the the Bengals didn't even make the playoffs, and then they just lost to the Patriots. Yeah, so, yeah. They they their trend their arrow is pointing down. Don't sleep, but don't sleep. Not towards the head. No. Like, yeah, for example, Joe, Joe, Burrow, Joe Burrow just absolutely revived the, the tight end position on that team. You made Mike Kosicki, who was irrelevant last year, ask me how I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, put up a, a record, record. I number. dropped him at one point last season. He's, he's uh, going, he's, Burrow is going to, he's going to elevate the players around him. And they're going to settle into a groove and they'll figure it out. Um, with, especially with how close that game was. If they had won the game, it, it still would have been completely been. different story. Like it's only one point different. So yeah. I still, in my head, I'm thinking they still played good, even though they lost. It was still a if good. They, if they had won, if they had won by two possessions, that's a, that's an upset, sure. But if they if they had come back and and walked it off on a field goal, for example, that's not really. It's it, it is an upset in the sense that they weren't favored. But I mean, I, I'm uh, I'm never surprised when Joe Burrow wins. Sure. I feel like That's a one point say. game with the, the team being as healthy as it was was an upset in itself. I feel like Kansas City probably should have put a whooping on them with how healthy Cincinnati is right now. And so the fact that it was that close kind of is a is proving that Cincinnati is that good of a team. And when they get healthy, they're gonna be playoff bound, I think. Or not not even fully healthy because Jamar Chase ain't injured. He's just not just I don't not think his mind is there. 
Yeah, he's not he's not fully there yet. And then, of course, we already kind of started talking about a little bit the uh, the la- the up to- upset that happened last night, which was Atlanta over Philly, and I, that's still an upset. But yeah, this is still the Philadelphia team that that, like I said last year, they're not as good as everybody thinks they are. And what did they do? They lost four in a row and choked away the the division last year. So, um, hey, just like I was saying with Kirk Cousins with. Justin Jefferson's man, if he can give for from a fantasy perspective, if he can get Justin Jefferson the points that he needs for fantasy, he can do the same thing for Drake London. I'm telling you, and B. John Robinson is elite. He's going to be a top three running back this year. The offense they may be kind of weird this season, especially off the gate, losing weird games, winning weird games. But I think from a fantasy perspective, as the year goes on, they're going to be able to cook with Kirk Cousins. I think we all had them, you know, trending up this year, um, especially over last year. So, you know, it's not it's it's not a stretch to see that see them uh, win a game or two that you wouldn't have expected. Um, I think this was probably one of them for sure. Yeah, long time comeback win wasn't on the wasn't on the, the list though. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Oh, so I feel like they're coming up on the the Daddy Dabs is going to be coming up on the lucky side of it now for the next couple seasons, because that Bijan Robinson pick for him last year didn't really do much, but like we were just talking Not about at all. the rookies, he was one of the last place teams exactly. Last year. But like we were saying, the rookies they need a little time, give it a little time, and man, Bijan yeah. Robinson he's, he's fucking cooking now. Still a round and, one draft. Pick. Oh yeah, exactly. That's so I was like, so Daddy Dabs that first season kind of got shit on. This season, next year, I see for the next couple of years, B. John Robinson's probably going to be one of the top scorers. And I'm still a good pick. It just took him a year for it to actually like pan out. But yeah, well, I think if I remember right, there was another like um, that's how Saquon Barkley was, was he not? Yeah. Like, his first year in the league, he was he was I talked mean, about he was going to oh change my. the game, yeah, and then yeah, he, he was he just got, subpar. Yeah, he was pretty. He wasn't that great that his first year. It took a year to get go, for him to get going. I think the it's easy to see. Bijan doing the same thing and really turning it around, turning it up a notch this this next year, dude. And that's why I took J.K. Dobbins so many times in my best balls, and even in my other league, I took J.K. Dobbins late because I get it, he's injury prone. But when you get him that late for that value, you're getting him for nothing, just like a bag of chips, you know. So you see how elite he is when he is playing. So you just take them late just to put them on your bench and see what happens. And now, look, I, I start him every week on my team. He's dropping like 25, 30 points every week. And it's so worth it. There's players like that I think people kind of forget about just because of their injuries and their past. But, like, if you're going to get them for free, it's like, why not? You know, we already know he's talented. So, yeah. Right on. I'll give J.K. Dobbins the credit and the fact that I never thought the dude would play in the NFL again. Yeah, with with how him. injury he pre- – yeah, exactly. With how injury-prone he was with Baltimore, just nonstop, dude. And then after last season with Moore, like, dude, I didn't think – I honestly thought that there was no way Baltimore would drop J.K. Dobbins and another team would pick him up. And here he is freaking killing it with also – I don't think we ever pointed out, but how hilarious is that J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are on the same team when Gus Edwards is running behind J.K. That's Dobbins on Baltimore. He's like, leave me alone, dude. Let me get a J.K. Shot. Dobbins switches teams. He shows up and Gus Edwards is like, what's up, dude? Hey, what up? <laughs> Guess Look who your backup is? i right now. Hoping he gets injured again. Yeah, exactly. No, that's why Gus, Gus Edwards was like, dude, I'm following J.K. Dobbins, dude. I'm going to be a starter. <laughs> Give it a couple <laughs> weeks. I'm going to be a starter. He's my yeah. meal ticket. <laughs> RB1 in a week or two. Exactly. That is funny. Did you want to uh, uh, hit up that injury report real quick? We'll just we, – we've talked – we've danced around quite a few yeah. of those p- folks, but yes. lay it all out for us. How does it, uh, how does it affect our fantasy week? going forward so let's see we actually got quite a few actually serious injuries too so for the first one we got Tua Tua is looking like it's going to be a concussion and he is going to be obviously out for multiple weeks like he's going to be missing some time and like I said I thought the dude should have retired but whatever Joe Mixon uh Joe Mixon's got a high ankle sprain severity has uh, not yet been determined but anytime especially with a running back when it's an ankle sprain it's not going to be good for the season 
uh, Isaiah Pacheco. He's got a fractured fibula. They've placed him on IR. Yeah, it's looking like he's going to be missing six to eight weeks of time. Uh, Tajay Spears, sprained ankle. Does not know exactly how long it's going to be, but again, sprained ankles are never good. Uh, Tank Bigsby, shoulder injury. Questionable for injury length again. Uh, Debo Samuels, big old Debo, calf strain, <clears throat> out for a few weeks. And as they said, he could uh, possibly be placed on IR. So it's one of those where Debo could be missing two weeks or he could be missing five to six weeks. Uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, right quad contusion, day to day. That is probably going to give me a heart attack. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, <laughs> uh, undisclosed lower body. And on the same situation, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be getting heart attacks on that. It's day to day, apparently, with him also. Uh, Cooper Cup, big injury there. That's it's saying huge it's a, with Nakua yeah, already being out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's looking like it's a high ankle sprain, out for multiple weeks, and it is, again, likely to be placed on IR. So, yeah, with uh, Puka already out, Cup getting placed on IR is really going to hurt them. That's huge, uh, too, because they're already oh. struggling. Mm -hmm. LA's already struggling, and that's wide receiver 1A and wide receiver 1B out. Yep. You know, Gone. For multiple weeks. That's that's a tough one to swallow right there. I could see them losing a lot of games until they get back. Because yep. Matthew yeah, Stafford, like match. I was saying, is getting ate up right now with that O line. So, were they behind exactly. in that game when Cup went down, or were they winning? I'm pretty sure they were already behind. Arizona like went out the gate like scoring crazy. Yeah, yeah, and Cup still put up some points. I think before he went out. Yeah. Cup was one of the better point scorers for wide receivers this week, actually, even with an injury. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we got Evan Ingram also. Uh, that one's going to hurt. Hamstring injury. Again, uh, any of these ankle and hamstring injuries, I feel like whenever you're tight ends, running backs, wide receivers, those like those situations, they're going to be lingering for a while. Uh, but it's week to week, apparently, with him also. Taysom Hill. Chest injury, questionable, but it's looking like it's going to be uh, – he'll be back after this next week. Questionable for week three alone, though. A.J. Brown, with week five uh, coming up as a bye week for them, it is unlikely that A.J. Brown will be playing before their bye week. So be ready to find somebody to replace A.J. Brown. And yeah. then the last one is David Njoku. He is also, or also unlikely to be playing this next week. Yeah, that's a – that's a lot. That's a lot and, of big names already. And not not written on there, but because it happened at the start of the week. But Christian McCaffrey getting placed on IR also. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Christian McCaffrey, and they've already talked about with Christian McCaffrey getting placed on IR, the length of injury for the IR might actually be like a six week injury compared to a four week injury on IR. So Christian McCaffrey might actually, <clears throat> with him already missing week one, he might not be back until like week eight or nine of the season for San Francisco. Oh, that long? Because I was thinking it was, because uh, I think they have a week for six by, and I think that so they're just thinking that they'll probably they'll he'll probably end because I think he'd be eligible to come back week five. Yeah, but but they're, they're talking they're about it. <laughs> it's going to be hold him out of week five, and then they have a buy in week six. Well, so, they're saying with this injury that it might be like a six week injury, not a four week injury. It might not be eligible to come back week five, but he still might not be healthy until like week seven. I and then you. even then with CMC, with them being the Super Bowl quality team and it being who he is, they're most likely not going to say, okay, you're healthy week seven, you're coming back week seven. They'll probably go, you're healthy week seven, let's plan on you getting a lot of practice reps, maybe getting two or three reps in game, and you'll be back next week. So that's why he Mason might not even be back cooking. until week eight. Like, if M Mason keeps cooking, there's not they're, they don't have to rush their stud. Exactly, you know? that's what I'm saying. CMC could possibly not even be back until like week eight or nine of the season. Yeah, that's a big one. I've got him in another league, so I feel your pain. And if it was anybody else, like any other running back, I feel like they would rush themselves. But with it being CMC, the best running back in the NFL, the most sought-after running back in the NFL, and an injury-prone running back, they are in no way going to rush this. Especially like, like either with Jordan Mason showing up, they're not hurting right now. They can sit there and go, bro, get healthy. We got it. You're okay. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely. As long as as long as Jordan Mason is doing his thing, then then they they have the luxury of taking their time because they uh, you you know for a fact that Super San Francisco is 
Super Bowl or bust. You yep. know, uh, that's their that's their mindset. You know, you know like, it is. And just to to side note the injury report there. What was mine real fast on my team? Because I have a CMC that's currently injured. Yeah, that's right. Keenan Allen, questionable. Jake Ferguson, questionable. T. Higgins, questionable. And then Justin Jefferson, questionable. Like, bro. And that- if Justin Jefferson actually gets lengthy injured, I think that's what I was saying. I think I might rebuild. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> well, and that's what we what led into this. <laughs> oh. I didn't even get to watch this ass woman. I just had to look at my phone every now and then and go to a web page and look at it from the guest perspective and see Wacko kicking the shit out of me. And you and you <laughs> rightly so renamed your team before the game. <laughs> yep. The Hurt Locker. <laughs> and it was it was but but hey, look, it could be worse because Cup Holder actually yep. scored less points than Thanks you for that, Arrow Dark. Arrow Dark was in Discord with me. He was like, bro, you're going to be worst place this week. This sucks. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, I feel bad for you. And then out of nowhere, I get a message from Arrow Dark. I can't believe I'm going to be last place. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What did I miss, dude? I thought I was going to be last place. Oh, yeah. That was uh, – I really thought it was going to be – especially at one point – Towards the uh, back half of uh, no, I think it was after the second round of games before the Sunday night game. I think I had you doubled up in points still, yeah. and I was like, "Oh man, he's definitely getting renamed." And I was looking at my score, and I was like, "I might be the one to rename him," <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and might I point freaking... out too? I've had the most points scored against my team in the first two weeks, and I have the second least amount of points scored for any team in the first two weeks. Hey, yeah. Get it out the way now, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's a recipe for zero and two for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's worse is that Cup Holders one and one, and Brian and I are not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That hurts, uh, dude. Lowest so, point score. He still got us beating record. What uh fiery fiery shits there? What's uh what's your what's your reason for your zero and two start? Uh, so your wife. No. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Fucking lobster. Friggin' taking over a team and, and kicking my ass week one. Um, all right, so I'll tell you exactly what it is. Uh, week one, I picked Joe Burrow as my starter. Week two, I picked Tua as my starter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the tweet, you know? Um, so your head dropped lower than anybody when he dived his head first. Yeah, you dove head first into your hands going, what the fuck? To, uh... yeah, not, not ideal. <laughs> not very ideal. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just it's it, they have not been performing the way I wanted them to. So, it, But it's only week two. It's, who are, we're still early on, you know? Who are your we studs that hadn't gotten going yet? Uh, Jamar Chase. Okay. Xavier, yeah. uh, Xavier Worthy was okay. Garrett Wilson's been pretty good. Um, Brock Bowers, his w- week one, I left him on the bench, and he got double digits. And then this past week, I started him, and he got double digits, which helped. Um, Terry McLaurin hasn't done shit at all. Um, but the big one, big one, it sounds like is Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase has got to get going. Big, the big one are the quarterbacks. Well, yeah, either, yeah. Either dying or not showing up. So, yeah. But we're gonna turn around <laughs> this week. Janu, how are you well, feeling about the uh, fantasy start so far? My one huge bust so far. <laughs> Keenan Allen. He had one game where he actually like before he got injured, had eleven targets, and he caught four balls and got me like eight points. Who gets eleven targets at wide receiver with somebody like Caleb Williams throwing to you? And gets four yeah. catches. Anyway, go ahead, Jude. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm really feeling my team this year, but there was two big problems with this week, and I had AJ Brown get out right before, and I filled him in with Tank Dell, and this was like the worst week to flex Tank Dell and Stroud because they go against the Bears defense. So they combined only got me like twelve or fourteen points, so that didn't do shit for me to help me out. So that really threw it, and then. My kicker situation, my kicker didn't do anything to at least scrape a win out of, of this week. So next week, I'm hoping it's going to be a bit better. But I am happy with 
my team, how it's going so far. Malik Neighbors, great pick. I love him so far. He did great That's last week. Pickup. He had like 18 yeah. targets. So I'm like, holy shit, man. So Especially I at least have him. On, who the hell would ever think to pick up a freaking wide receiver in the Giants? Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I I'd be interested to see how how that how that how Malik Neighbors goes throughout the season. If he's going to be a stud, every, if he's going to be a consistent every week stud, or if he's going to have some goose eggs. Just I don't see him of, being CJ Stroud from last year for you. <laughs> CJ Stroud wasn't even like a top quarterback or anything. Uh, like I'm just saying, like pick wise for you, like picking Malik Neighbors is a crazy pick. I feel like with yeah. Daniel. Jones Jones stones him. That's why I feel like that was like your crazy pick last season. It was like saying oh, CJ was gonna kill it and he did. Yeah. I don't think Malik really Neighbors is gonna kill it. I was honestly so. a little bit concerned about it, but what makes me feel better about it, like I was saying last week, is just the fact that he's getting like ninety to hundred percent of team reps and he's getting like, you know, at least ten plus targets every single game, which is a lot, you know. That's, so I mean that yeah. yeah, that if he's getting fed like that. And From what I saw, genius. it was like fifth highest in the league right now. They had 18 targets last game and 10 receptions. The big thing is, is if he's getting that much attention from his quarterback, he's going to start attracting that much attention from the defense. And so, the how he holds up over to that over time is gonna, really going to determine his his uh, consistency. Yeah, um, I'm more worried, honestly, about Daniel Jones more than anything else. I think I know Malik Neighbors is a stud. I think he could even handle some double coverage every now and then. But Daniel Jones throwing into double coverage—that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> that's true. That's true too, for sure, for <laughs> sure. And I, we got a we got a special shout out for Q Swin because it didn't take him but two weeks to finally get his first win this year, rather than last year. I think uh, could shake you. It, it was a while. I mean, he was he was he was like zero and eight or something last year. Yeah, getting constantly getting renamed, which he got renamed again in week one to "Can we redo keep, keepers?" So uh, week two, he gets a, he gets a dub. He was uh, he was all set to go zero and fourteen, I think. And sweaty pits. <laughs> I just noticed that dude's name. Is that the? Uh... Oh no 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 no! Who who is that? <laughs> who the hell is sweaty pits? I like that name. Somebody Ethan must, or whatever. yeah. Who, who is it? I think it was Ethan. Whoever's name is Ethan. Oh, Dirty Nickel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I'm I'm trying to read the names and I'm like, who's missing? Who's missing? It was like, it's not Homely Boy. It's not. I I couldn't. I yeah, Dirty Nickel. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't even notice that team name change. Yeah, he whooped it. He whooped up a uh, old cup cup holder. And uh, other shout out. Benches be tripping. That's Lobster, two and zero, two and zero. Her first go round in the THF FFL. She came in to bail out, <laughs> bail us out when we lost a team at the very last second. We lost a manager, and she came in and scooped the team. I will tell you guys right now. Think what you want. That's fine. I haven't helped her at all. In fact, today she was asking me questions. Well, I can tell. And- She's winning. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, Did you see her team, dude? She's two and zero. Of course, you're not helping her. I can't see. I can't see past the Wacko Dome Whackers doubling up the Hurt Locker. I, ever, all the other sc- scores are a blur. You still never watched League, have you, dude? Dude, the League no, would I've be seen. even better for you now. The League, the main uh, character, Kevin, the commissioner of the League. Him and his wife both play in this. They're in the league together at one point, and it's oh, really? even a joke that she runs his league because he's not good enough. And she runs his team and blah blah blah. <laughs> so she joins the league and actually like starts winning. It's dude, you gotta watch the league. It's hilarious. I, I do need to. Everybody tells me that all the time, and I'm just especially just dude. You're the commissioner. You would feel it so much more. There's so many times with Kevin the commissioner. Shit happens to him. And it's like, <laughs> uh, you gotta watch it anyway. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, cup holders uh, profile <laughs> pic. <laughs> I was laughing about that dude. That's, that's a good picture of a cup. <laughs> um. So, well, what do we think about uh, the waiver wire this uh, this week, guys? I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I know that you might have your eyes on some people you might not want to say out loud, considering half the league is right here, but. 
I'll say uh, one that I have out loud that I know other people are probably going to go for. It, but I don't know if they will, but Braylon Allen. I feel like Braylon Allen might actually. We're we're losing your mic. Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about you guys? Uh, yeah, he, was, Ray? he was talking about Braylon Allen, but yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm torn right now because I kind of went into the season saying, "Oh, I'm going to stream defenses," and then I was able to pick up New England, and I may be biased, but the Patriots' defense is actually kind of good. Yeah, fantasy wise, they in real life they yeah. are too. So do I want to? Do I want to keep streaming, or should I just ride out New England? Who are they going against this week? Uh, They're going against the Jets on Thursday Night Football. I mean, Aaron Rodgers hasn't been hasn't been Aaron Rodgers yet. I mean, until he does, the Russian game has been looking killer, though. I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah. that's a that's a yeah. But I mean, if if New England excels against the run, rush, uh, I mean, this could be a down week for Bryce Hall. Um, and, and it's a Thursday night game. You know, Thursday night games are always yeah. kind of wonky. So um, I, I like New England defense this week. We don't include uh, defensive players in the injury report, but Jawan Bentley is out for the season, uh, allegedly with a torn pec, pec muscle. Um, and he he's not a household name by any means, but he's been a pivotal part on on the defense in the last in the last couple of games at least. So I'm almost scared to 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 ride with them. I almost think I should pick someone up and then fade them this week and then see how they recover, given that that's a short week. And but at the same time, there's the Aaron Rodgers factor where he loves throwing picks, loves throwing picks, and the Patriots love picking Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's kind of like, I know I should just leave them in place because I'm overthinking it, but I would. I'm, sure, I'm sure other players at this point are, when they're looking at top 10 defenses, thinking, oh, should I just stream a defense? Or should I ride it out and, and hope for the best? Dude, and honestly, it, like, there, are, there are a lot of defenses that I can stream right now. What, Tampa Bay, they're going to get a couple picks. Vegas against Carolina, they're going to they're, they're going to well, you can, if you need to stream defenses, dude, you can just pick pretty much every week whoever the hell Carolina's playing against. Yeah, pretty much. So I guess it also streaming defenses come, to me comes down to especially in the cases where I have a good defense that I'm not going to drop. Do I have an extra defense, uh, extra spot to bring it up a defense that it's without not having dropping? Because right New England is a is a good high scoring fantasy defense. Right. Uh, especially in our league uh, with return yards and stuff that are included. So um, I, I, if I'm you, I'm not dropping New England. Now, if I have a, I do an have, extra I do have room spot, right now, but, but, so I wasn't going to drop them because I have room, yeah. but I can pick someone up right now. Yeah, I mean. I got, I got lucky with that. I'm trying to pick up a defense. Obviously not whoever's playing Carolina. That's why I said that. I'm, I'm way rewiring another defense that I don't want to say. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the main reason I actually feel, I guess, in the slightest bit, if you can ever say you feel lucky for Christian McCaffrey being placed on IR, is the fact that since Christian McCaffrey's on IR, I get an extra bench spot. So I was able to just kind of yeah, pick up right. a free defense spot without Two having right. to drop anybody. Two is my extra bench right now. Yep. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, with as many injuries as is happening in, in weeks, to the most teams have somebody on the I, in the IR spot already. <laughs> I think every I think just about everybody does. Yeah, in one of my leagues, I'm straight up rostering the Bears defense just for the future. If the Bears offense can pick it up and their defense gets going a little bit more, they're going to be consistently high scoring every single week with how good they've been playing. Bears have always kind of had a good fantasy football defense. Like I, I feel Bears. like they've always, they they really always have had a, a, a serviceable defense. Like they're always one of you know it's kind of like Baltimore back in the day too. They were always like you always wanted Baltimore's defense. And, uh, Pittsburgh Steel Curtain. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're definitely good. What uh anybody uh anybody else? 
you know that you know was going to be a hot wa waiver wire commodity this this week. Um, Pretty much any wide receiver, <laughs> any wide weird. receiver in LA, right? I mean, the like, only one I said, I think, yeah, but here he touched that was Braylon Allen because my mic started cutting out. Yeah, Braylon Allen, I think, was going to be my hot pickup for the week if I get him. If not, I mean. You know, he's one of those where I don't think he's going to necessarily be a, a game changing running back, but he's, uh, I believe, a rookie. Rookie, he's the yeah, fast. He's, he's the fastest running back rookie out of this class, I think, is what it is. Like Xavier Worthy yeah, is obviously the fastest. Ball, yeah, and, that's, and yeah, he's good too. He's just got Brees Hall in front of him, so he's not going to be a starter anytime soon. But I feel like picking him up. He's going to get some good backup points, especially with Aaron Rodgers liking to do the chunk down passes. He'll get some good catch balls from Aaron Rodgers. Maybe some good uh, vulture touchdowns in the backfield. Good flex spot, maybe. Yeah, the Chiefs' backfield is um, – the running back situation is kind of iffy right now, so there's really like three main guys you can pick from there. But it's kind of unsafe, and whoever people end up getting, it's just going to be luck of the draw because if Steele ends up getting the spot – He's still going to be competing with, uh, you know, Kareem Hunt and all those other guys behind him. So it's like, is he even going to start Hunt's fully? Yeah, or it could be Kareem Hunt just starting straight up. But we don't know. So, but the Chiefs do good with Pacheco. So if they do start someone and play them, you know, the majority of the time, it can be good. But personally, I'm kind of staying away from that one right now. I might pick up something later if he if they're still available, like a deeper pick. Like I took. Cream Hunt, like a couple days ago, but even with that, I'm not too sure about it. Um, and if you need a quarterback, freaking just pick up Derek Carr, dude. Just take Derek Carr if he's available. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it probably should be in a lot of the leagues. I'm down yeah. a lot of people like early drafted Derek Carr. Not a lot of people are going, man, that Raiders offense. <laughs> uh, Saints. Saints. He just yeah. kicked my ass. I don't know why I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking about Derek Carr's old days. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering. I, that that was a good question because uh, we were talking earlier about Derek Carr uh, pre-show, and I'm wondering, did people just forget what he did in Week One? Just was he? Is he really still out there in that many leagues after after what they did? In oh week yeah, one? I think so. I it's think just Derek Carr's he's not shown I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just because he's not a rushing quarterback. Like, even though he's popping off and being insane, he's still only getting like 20 points, which is good if you don't have a quarterback, but it's not good if you have like any top 10 quarterback already. It's just, you know, decent. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. And in this day and age, with as many rushing quarterbacks as there are, you don't need a quarterback that can throw up, which is it's nice to have a quarterback if you do that can throw up over 300 yards and get you some good couple touchdowns. But I feel like that's a lot more rare than to find a quarterback who can rush for over 100 yards because, man, the rushing quarterback is where it's at for fantasy football. Lamar Jackson's proof of that. That dude is not yeah. a very great passing quarterback, but he puts up monster stats for fantasy football whenever he gets his legs moving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, on in Yahoo, Derek Carr is only uh, rostered in twenty one percent of leagues, which has gone up only two percent in the last day. So yep. he doesn't uh, rush, and not a lot of people uh, feel that confident that the Saints can every single week go out there and have Derek Carr throw up over three hundred yards. And even though he's put up three touchdowns and two touch, you know, a total of five touchdowns, he's not throwing for a ton of yards either. He only had two hundred yards in his first game. So, you know, he's not even coming close to the 300-yard bonuses that most leagues have. Yep. Um, you know, he only he put and up two. Throwing touchdowns are less than rushing touchdowns also. Not in our league. In our league, six. Oh, they're the six. same? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. All touchdowns are six. Nice. That's why That's why quarterbacks can sp score as many points as they can in our league. Um, it's actually the top-scoring position all around in our league. Um, and I've tweaked that to to bring it down. It used to be worse. Um, but, uh, yeah, what was this? Oh yeah. He only did 243 yards, uh, last week against the Cowboys. Um, and he had an interception. Um, and like you guys already alluded to, he's, he's, he's not rushing at all. I mean, he's got three attempts on the year, so mm -hmm. he's not, he's not scrambling. He's not even scrambling for yards right now. So yeah, but he is serviceable, especially if you're a, a if you're somebody that has Tua. 
Uh, if you're somebody that had Jordan Love, um, if you have somebody, if you're hunting that, for a quarterback, man. Yeah, if you're on the, I'll get your points. If you're somebody that has yeah. Dak Prescott. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, yeah, Dak hasn't been Dak yet so far in fantasy this year. Been a little bummed because I have him in two of them. I, I have him and CD in two two leagues, so that's a rough one. Uh, uh, that first week, the Cowboys looked good, but it wasn't like Dak put up massive fantasy points. No, no. And then he didn't this do last week, obviously, he didn't put up massive fantasy points. In fact, if the cow, if if Dak and CD had popped off in Week One, uh, like the rest of the team did, um, then I probably would be two and zero right now because I barely lost in Week One, um, fantasy. So, yeah, they they need to step it up. Because my fantasy <laughs> season depends on them in a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, but speaking of CD Lamb, because we are starting to get into, uh, we're only we're only got about twenty minutes left here. Um, our our THF extra point prime time parlay was a big fail this week. But CD Lamb was our lone bright spot, and it wasn't just because. He had a half a yard <laughs> bonus on underdog. That was unexpected, and in a, and I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna not take it." So I stayed with my CD Lamb pick. He did eclipse the 88 and a half yards, but he'd only need on underdogs. He only needed the half yard. So we were one for four this week, gentlemen. Uh, I can't believe Lamar Jackson got less than 51 rushing yards. Yeah, yeah and then, I would have put a hundred dollars plus on that dude. That he, I think Lamar should have put been up 122 yards. against the Chiefs. Exactly, dude. The ninth worst rushing defense in the NFL, and he put up like 40 rushing guards. Like you. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was best. It was a rough one. I need to get some. I need to get some like uh, uh, X's and checks on these on these for next yeah week. i need I, to keep check I, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you should to, do that where it says the thf and then a primetime parlay and then right underneath it it should have like our names with like either x's or o's and if we got them right each week it's an o or something i don't know oh, something I'm def- like that. yeah i'm definitely gonna keep keep score on who who gets what because we do have a underdog underdog uh pot rolling on this one um what do you guys uh what do you guys what what do you uh, over under plays do you like for this coming week maybe not necessarily for the parlay but is there anybody in mind that you're deciding between honestly i mean i want to take uh, the one i'm going to go for is aaron rogers under on passing yards uh, i think aaron rogers has shown not a lot of promise in the passing game but their rushing game has looked amazing he's going to get against new england like ray was talking about just a little bit ago he doesn't have great games against new england he loves throwing picks over the last two games he's only thrown up 160 yards and 176 yards so i mean um i think against new england aaron Rodgers, he's at 211 and a half yards i don't think he's going to be going over 200 yards passing now, if you do want to take the over right now on underdog, he has a .5 uh, gimme pick pass yards. I mean, I'll definitely take an over on point five. obviously, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at prize pick shit. If he's an oh, yeah, I'll definitely I'll but take I, that. But I don't know if we're going to have that option because I'm going to run I'm gonna run back the uh, C.D. Lamb. If, if C.D. Lamb's give me on that, I would take the yeah. give me on C.D. Lamb and take under on Aaron Rodgers' yards. I feel like yeah, that's Aaron a pretty Rodgers is guaranteed on under. I like but that. But if there's like no that. other gimme pick, then hell yeah, give me a gimme pick on Aaron Rodgers over on a half yard. That is a really good one. 211 and a half yards for Aaron Rodgers. That 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 has underwritten all over it unless uh unless he all of a sudden decides he know. wants to kick New England's ass. Yeah. But that's gonna I again, that game, I hate that I hate that game. I hate it. I because for fantasy wise, I and for daily fantasy, I hate that game because a I think it's going to be a defensive battle, and I really B, don't know what to pick here. Yeah, I, I, I just don't like Thursday that, games anyway. Yeah, you guys, you guys know my history with Thursday games. I stay away. Th- I avoid them like the plague. You know, when it comes to fantasy football, you can't bench your studs. But I swear to God, every time I see them playing on Thursday, I want to because they just ah, I hate Thursday games. There, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. 
Yeah, that's my thing. I've got a thing with Thursday games. I just don't like them. They grind your gear. They grind my gears as it come, as it pertains to fantasy. Now, every once in a while, I think a couple of years ago, we had a, I think it was a Bengals and Chiefs game that like blew up, and it was like forty five to fifty three or something like that. Some crazy, crazy blowout game on both sides. I, I don't remember who it was or what teams or, I just remember it was a Thursday game that just blew my mind. But that's so rare. So what are y'all looking at for boats? Yeah, I'm gonna do the CD Lamb. What about you, Janu? Um, I have three different or four different ones that I can recommend, and I'll give you the one that I pick. But I have Hunter Henry over on receiving yards. It's only 32 and a half. Last week he got a shit ton of targets. I don't think that they're gonna. I don't think the Jets are gonna hold him too much. I think they're gonna focus like they were last week on Henry the whole time. And 32 really isn't a lot. So even if it's not as much as last week, I think he'll still hit it. Um, and then I got J.K. Dobbins over on rushing yards. Um, I'm not sure how well the the Chargers are going to do in the passing game, especially if their quarterback ends up not playing next week, which I think he will, but he's kind of questionable. And if he doesn't, they're probably going to rely more on Dobbins. Um, and I have the Alvin Kamara rush and receiving touchdown over on that one with how much he's been – Popping off that one is probably pretty easy, and then I have the Andy Dalton over on passing yards. I think with their <laughs> offense they can do it, and they're going against the Raiders. Raiders defense. So I'm telling y'all, he's going to hit that easily. At least is that a demon it. pick on Price Picks? I don't no, know. Probably. If it, if it is, I'd be I'd be putting a three man parlay on that hoe. A hundred dollars, ka. <laughs> so Andy Dalton on underdog is a hundred one ninety five point five passing yards higher or lower. You're taking you're taking two hundred yards for him, huh? No shot. Exactly. I don't think so. I mean, are the Ra- the Raiders I defense mean, maybe, that yeah. great? Right. I-, I think he might have a good game and maybe throw like one seventy five. <laughs> like maybe if he's lucky. Well, since you guys don't like it, Pass- I'll passing like- yards are down across the board this year. Well, I mean, no, it's it's not yeah, our so pick, far. dude. If, so if, if the Andy, if, hey, well, I, I thought gotta Lamar Jackson was going to kill him last week. I only really got to give you guys one of them, so exactly. you guys can take the Hunter Henry one. I'll do that one over on receiving yards because I feel like that one's pretty safe. But, I like Hunter Henry. Yeah, you can't. You keep that Andy Dalton to yourself. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but, but after a couple uh, a couple of days, you're gonna see Jadu post like a, a four hundred dollar winner on Andy Dalton. <laughs> uh, yeah, like yeah, for sure. Hey, <laughs> the most underrated picks are the ones that pop off. It's the overrated ones that always hit a half a yard freaking under every time. Yeah, dude. That's true. That's true. The like ones that are hot picks. Yeah, the hot picks. Look, everyone's going yeah. for Patrick Mahomes on passing yards. Come on, take them. Under Half by a yard, yard at the end of the game. Exactly. <laughs> oh no, Patrick Mahomes <laughs> slid at the one yard line and didn't take the touchdown. Yeah, and yeah, now they're yeah. Kneeling it. Oh no, they're going how much, under. How much did that kill everybody last? Yep. Time? Oh my god, that that that's all anybody wanted to talk about for a freaking week. We had a lot of conspiracy talk last year about about stuff like that. Hey, the refs right. and everything. Get the, get the yeah, oh, we're, did you bring I that? Up? <laughs> I got Don't some crazy ref stats. Now. I got insane ref stats, dude. The guy that coached the Super Bowl or ref the Super Bowl last year, I got his ass down on here too. And I got mm-hmm. some crazy stats for him. <laughs> One of which, though, so I want to say this real quick. Since FanDuel partnership, and this is before the season this year, since FanDuel partnership, road underdogs have won 30 out of 40 times when the official was Bill Vinovich. That's the guy who refed the Chiefs game and didn't give him any holding calls in the Super Bowl. Wow. That is an insane stat number. This is just before this season started. Yep. I'm starting to write down stuff like this, so in, I'm gonna start looking Baltimore, at reps. Yeah, in the Baltimore gonna, Kansas City game. Wearing my hat pretty soon. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously, dude. In that Baltimore Kansas yeah. City game, dude, when there was that controversial, uh, controversial call, uh, the the head ref in that game, it was like five and zero oh, Kansas City uh, with him head uh, being the head ref in their games, and Baltimore was like zero oh, and three or zero oh, and four or something like that with him as the head ref. And then, surprise, surprise, Kansas City comes out there and wins with a, a very bad referee call. Typical. That was that game where they had the the defensive holding or defensive pass interference, and the dude, on, even on the replay, he like didn't even touch the guy. 
and the announcers were like, um, I'm not exactly sure what the referee saw there. And they brought in Ed Hockley, and he's all like, yeah, I don't know exactly what they saw right there on that call. I think that was just a miscommunication. Like, no, the referee <laughs> saw that the Chiefs needed a first down, so they went out there and they made up a, a pass interference call. So uh, we got a couple – we still got a few minutes left. Let's. Uh, I haven't given real... any picks yet, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. sorry, on Ray. Yeah. Here. yeah well, I mean, right his aluminum so... hat sparking, dude. Right now, <laughs> yeah. theories are rushing, dude. We don't even care. <laughs> Lord, so, I apologize. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with with Thursday night football for a minute. Um, oh boy. Few things few things to consider. So first of all, Ramondre Stevenson, one anytime touchdown is is an easy bet. Like the and and, and there's a reason for this. Um, the the Jets secondary is really good. Passing is going to be down. They're not going to be throwing the ball much. Um, Ramondre is a force of nature on the ground, so I, I really think he's going to get in. Um, with that being said, passing like they're going to be running the ball more than they're throwing the ball, which leads me to believe that Hunter Henry. Um, I do like that number, but I feel like they're going to double him up. Because he's he's the leading receiver right now on on the Patriots, um, the wideouts really haven't gotten much in the uh, in in terms of targets or yards. Um, so keep an eye on him. It's it's a good it's a good line because he can really hit that in two or three receptions. But they also haven't passed. They they also don't have an offensive play longer than 19 yards all season. So the, the, you're not going to get a. I, I really don't see Jacoby Brissett putting a 40 yard pass down to Hunter Henry um, against the Jets secondary. So while we're talking about the, the Jets and passing, um, another bet you can look at is Aaron Rodgers over, over one interceptions. Like I said, he loves throwing picks. He loves throwing picks to the Patriots uh, and going up against Christian Gonzalez and, and um, Jabril, Jabril Peppers on the, in the Patriots secondary. Uh, it's it's a really scary thing for, for him to be throwing like that. So there's a good chance he gets picked off this game. So you can really go either of those two, uh, the, the Ramadre anytime touchdown or the plus plus uh, half of an interception for uh, Aaron Rodgers. Well, that's interesting. That's what I have on the Patriots. Yeah, I like the Stevenson one. You know, Flock yeah. Fantasy, I love him, and he's helped me out with a lot of stuff. But he told me, do not get Ramondre Stevenson this year. Experts project that the Patriots are going to be the worst offense in the entire league, worse than the Panthers. And I'm like, uh, with, wrong. with a new quarterback, with Brissett at least, they got to be at least decent enough for fantasy, right? And I remembered Ramondre Stevenson before they had Ezekiel Elliott. I had him on my team, and I let go of him last year. But I had him before that, and he was super Thank solid you. the entire year. So because I was going to trade, I was going to trade, try and trade for him last year, and then I ended up drafting. It's him just Zeke being better. there, man. That's it. It's yeah. just with Zeke if, when he gets the ball and he's the main focus of the offense. Antonio Gibson's great. another one. He's so they picked up they picked up Gibson in the offseason. season, um, and he he was pretty explosive in the in the second half there. They couldn't figure anything out after that. But uh, he's another one to keep an eye on for, like, red zone plays, for example. He might get some action. Maybe, yeah. Nice. All right, well, um, that being said, what uh, what games are we looking for, forward to in the, the upcoming week? What's uh, – well, I'll, I'll lead this one because Dallas, obviously – uh, I, I, this is, this is a show me something game for Dallas. I think, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, it's no surprise that they went and whooped up, whooped Cleveland. Uh, but last week was embarrassing. Um, and now, now if, if they, if they're going to have me believe in them this year, they need to go beat a good team and Baltimore, it just happens to be right there. So go beat Baltimore or beat Baltimore at home. Obviously home field advantage was awesome all last year. Not yes not last week, but all last year home field advantage was great. So until the playoffs. But yeah, until the playoffs. Um beat Baltimore. That's the obviously the game as a fan I'm most looking forward to, but also as uh as as 
you know, I, I need I need it. I need it, that game. I think it's an important game for both teams because both teams if, are in a similar situation. Well, if Baltimore loses their own three, which again, that's it's only week three. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but momentum is a thing. Um, and if they're going to keep trending downwards, it's going to be harder for them to trend upwards. And the same goes for Dallas. They blew out, you know, uh, massage boy over there on week one and then really got the ball just run down their throat against New Orleans. If they lose this game, it'll hurt less than New Orleans because no one expected New Orleans to win. But at the same time, it puts them it puts them down to one and two. And again, it's week three. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, if New Orleans it wins does. again, it's like, dude, what the heck is going on, man? Three Pete is going to be crazy. I'm scared. I'm scared to pick New Orleans. Like I really want to pick New Orleans. But I'm also delusional because I really want to pick Carolina in this game. So I want to pick Carolina. I'm scared to say that because the quarterback like, situation. Because uh, <laughs> Vegas is because because lots the Raiders are riding high after beating Baltimore, and then they're they're switching it up with the uh, with putting Andy Dalton in. And it's like is yeah Dalton could go out there and lay a goose egg, but at the same time it's like the whole game plan changes now, and I feel like this is a sneaky game where they either keep it close or they. Or maybe even pull it out. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll be a game time decision. You'll be getting my picks on at twelve o'clock on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Philly and New Orleans matchup is real interesting to me too. Because I, I thought this in my head when you mentioned uh, uh, Alvin Kamara. You know, anytime touchdown is a good. It, it would be a good bet. I think N- Navy said it, and I'm like, or he scored five touchdowns in two weeks. It's time for him More to put up a line. goose egg. That's a trap bet, right? <laughs> you know, it's, so yeah. Uh, I wonder if uh, this is the week that New Orleans kind of hits a wall, and uh, and and you know, you guys know that I'm not high on Philly, so I'm I'm, I'm like fifty fifty on who to pick in that game too. Uh, the other game that's that's interesting to me is the Houston Minnesota game. Um, yeah, that one would be good. <laughs> that same with Arizona Detroit. Yep. Yeah, Arizona and Detroit is another one. That this is a uh, what well, pretty good week to be honest. I thought week 2 was very easy to pick and oh, I got yes. I only got half of them right. Um I really really don't like this week at all. I don't like, like this I, week at all. Uh uh-uh, uh I'm it, it's making me sick to my stomach trying I'll to figure out who to like pick on some minutes. of these. And was just like, like I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to come back to this. I'm very <laughs> confident. I'm very confident for one game, and even that's trap. I'm, like Tampa Bay, Denver. Like I'm definitely picking Tampa Bay, but like, ugh, I, I still don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's that's a that's a fair fair to say that that's probably one of the easiest ones on the board this week. I think that's like the, the at least for me, because again, the I'm, I'm delusional and I'm getting thrown off by the Carolina switching things up. But like, other than that, none of these games are really that cut cut and dry. I would have said San Francisco over the Rams was is, is in the bag, but I, I just after Minnesota whooped their ass, I don't I don't know about San Francisco right yeah, now. I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I, there's none of these that are that easy. Uh, well, I Buffalo and Jacksonville, Buffalo, Seattle, Jacksonville. Seattle over Miami. I would say that one would be an easier pick with Miami's quarterback situation. Seattle has yeah. a really good defense. They shouldn't yeah. lose that game. Yeah, that one should be a pretty easy Seattle pick. But Buffalo over Jacksonville, that's the other one that I see that's um, pretty – you know, Burrow right now is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or however, <laughs> which which way you want to put that. I feel like that's um, him every season, dude. So, At this point, well, in the first like... four weeks of the, of the season for uh-huh. sure, and – Going against Washington, you'd think that's an easy win, but which bro is going to show up? Yeah. For me, Just pick the opposite of everything you think is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's I what so, I should have done last week. So I looking, have him, I, I'm starting him in fantasy this week, so fade him. He's going to play like shit because I'm starting him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if there's one game this week that to me is almost a guaranteed win, 
Uh, and like that you should take all unders on one offense because of it was the Cleveland game. Cleveland versus New York Gi- uh, Giants. I don't see Daniel Jones doing anything against Cleveland's defense. I'm not saying that Cleveland's yeah. offense is going to go out there and put up 40 points, but I think betting-wise, you could probably guarantee that Cleveland's going to win that game, and you could probably gonna, guarantee uh, to take anybody time. on the Giants' offense under. Daniel yeah. Jones under on passing yards, running backs under on run- rushing yards, Wide receivers under on receiving yards. I mean, you pretty much guarantee they're not going to have a good offensive game against Cleveland. Are we yeah. finally picking Chicago here? Are they going to pull it out against? <laughs> nope, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not giving them another week at least. Like, like which 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 supposedly generational quarterback is going to figure it out this game? <laughs> or are, uh, is, so is, is Andy going to do the smart thing and put Flacco in? Dean Daniels <laughs> is looking like he's going to hit it quicker than Caleb Williams, I would say. Yeah. He's already putting up more passing yards and more fantasy points and rushing yards and pretty much everything. Their offense isn't the best, but they're doing better than the Bears. This is yeah, this is supposed to be an easy pick for Indy, but uh, again, they're they just got beat by a backup in Green Bay, so I know it's Indianapolis. What are you supposed to pick? <laughs> I mean, jeez. I I'm telling you, I, I, I need to go get some Pepto. I'll tell you what, this. Indianapolis and that guy are, are really going to kick ass. You know, you know, that guy on the Colts, that star they have. He's going to be so freaking up and down this season, it looks <laughs> yeah. like, dude. He's going to have games where he drops like a 35-point fantasy game, and he's going to have those bummers or just loses for no reason. Just like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Well, oh, if yeah, you're really cool, if you're a subscriber on my channel, then you get to play pickums uh, against us. So DM me your picks, and and if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing on my Twitch channel, and you guys can you can be on the on the show and show off your uh, flex your football brain against the uh, podcast team and and a lot of people in our community. So uh, the other thing we got going on too is uh, Monday Night Football Squares, um, which uh, last week we. We had what was the Monday night game? Atlanta and Philly. Yeah, Atlanta and Philly. Yeah, two square. Two of the two of the squares won. Reggie and Paravet, and then uh, uh, they won a thousand V bucks each. And then this week we got the Commanders and Bengals. We got two Monday night games this week. Two Monday night games. So I just went. I went with the one that I think is getting. Uh, this one's on ESPN. The other one is starts like at six thirty, and it's on ESPN two and in the Spanish channel. Is that a is that game somewhere? It's out. It's not in the country, right? There's something special about the early Monday Night Football game in there. Or am I uh, am I thinking of something weird? Early Monday. Actually, no, I don't. I was thinking that, uh, but I and I'm. I'm I should have had that in my head before I said it. Let's see. I know it's on. I don't see anything special about it. I was thinking that it it's it's like out. It's a one of those away games or whatever. I know it's on ESPN Deportes. Maybe that's all it was. Maybe they are playing in Buffalo, or I mean in the in Buffalo. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, it, High Mark Stadium. Never mind. I'm crazy. But anyway, regardless, I went with the other game, the the one that's on regular ESPN that starts at uh, the later time. So we got Washington and Bengals for the Monday Night Pickums this week. Um, 100 bits per square uh, per. gets you gets you on the board, and uh, it, it if it's 75 squares or more. Then we do forward and backward square, score, making up to eight winners possible instead of just four. So get your squares if you want to play. And if you don't play Fortnite, we can do cash equivalent as a as a prize for the uh in place of the thousand V Bucks. V Bucks are nine eight dollars and ninety nine cents for a thousand V Bucks now. Just keep going up. Are they? Uh, are your squares already available to get? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They sure are. Okay. Absolutely. I'm gonna take square sixty nine then. Oh, nice. that one's already taken. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know that because Q got it today when I streamed earlier today. Damn it, yep. dude. 
Q's on I was it. gonna hit you with it right now because I never get sixty nine. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. That uh, sounds like a your problem. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a her problem. All right, it sounds like a her. Oh, problem. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. <laughs> Cover your ears. I still get the six. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. This segment I has think... been sponsored by Listerine. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think this, is, this show is over. The show is over. I apologize to all of you that may be watching on tomorrow on YouTube. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Make sure right, y'all remember, guys. Wacko promotes everything that was said here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as always, our tradition is to wrap it up with an extra point. So, what? Uh, what is your extra point point for the week? Well, y'all can go first. Don't trade Marvin Harrison. Don't listen to Brian. Keep him. <laughs> <laughs> I, never said, I said Marvin Harrison was bad. <laughs> nope, you tell me to drop him. Tell me he's bad. <laughs> he's not I never said yeah, he was so bad. That's that's <laughs> I said his quarterback was bad. I said he's got no quarterback to throw to him. <laughs> um, you know, I shoot. I I had I had a good extra point too, and I and I forgot. So my extra point. I, that's why I need to write that, it down. The Cowboys better win this week because uh, if the Cowboys lose this week, the only thing that Dak Prescott has going for him right now is that he's like the best quarterback in the regular season. We already know what's going to happen postseason. So if he starts flaking it up in the regular season and we start losing a bunch of games, uh, maybe that's what we need. Maybe he needs the reverse bad yeah, in the flip regular it. season. Flip it. Good in the playoffs. Not going to happen. He just got the biggest contract in NFL history. I want to see more. He from needs him. it to happen. And I better see more from him this week. Can happen. So. That's my extra point, dude. Dak Prescott's going to get a foot in the balls if he doesn't show me a little bit more this week. <laughs> Personally. Personally, I will hunt him down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are live now. Don't don't be making any crazy. Threat. I mean, I love Dak Prescott. I would never threaten <laughs> such a beautiful man. You kidding me? I'd like never Dak threaten Prescott. him. Yeah, Jerry is sending a draw to your house right now. <laughs> yeah, <geez>. And canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd Navy go? It's just the I, piano now. I, I I think the my the week one and two have been absolutely crazy. Like just just weird weird i'm ready to go back to what i thought the nfl was going to be this season like all this i feel like everything that we i i said at least in the pre-season show has so far has been wrong so like i want to i want a week where i get some things right <laughs> i want to win i just want to win can I have my NFL back? <laughs> uh, so my Make extra... NFL great again. <laughs> Put it on a hat. Get it out there. Get it on the <laughs> um, yeah, so so my extra point pertains to betting. Um, you know, whether you're using prize picks, underdog, sleeper, uh, or an actual sports book, um, you gotta tr- you have to trust the numbers. Do not trust your gut. Um, and, and don't be afraid to bet small because, because small, small bets and small winnings are still winnings. You know, it's, it's really enticing, especially on, on, you know, these fantasy apps where six picks multiplies it a hundred times. Oh, that looks great. Do, do three picks at a time, take the freebie, take the, 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 the over half a yard, um, and add one or two on there and do the flex play. All right. Get your wager back. Plus a little more if it hits, all right. Don't waste don't, no, your money. Go, go big or go home. <laughs> if, if you're up a bunch and you haven't had to deposit in a while, go for it. Screw it. But if you're doing that every time and you have to add, keep adding balance every week, you're getting, you're gonna lose out. So just just think small, win small, and if you win a lot, but they're small wins, eventually it becomes a big win. So don't don't overthink it. Don't underthink it. Just Just trust, just trust gamble. the number. Trust I'll tell you, I'll tell you. the odds a lot more. It you, might I, sound better to have times 100 or times 25 on a six pick, but you that's have how uh, they get you. That's how exactly they, don't, because don't they know the, the three book. pick is like a hundred percent more likely to hit than exactly. any six pick. Yeah, don't don't make donations to the sports book. 
I feel like you're speaking directly to me because I, 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 I literally I everybody. this week, this week, I, Lobster, I, please mute. I decided to change my strategy. I, I, cause prize picks has this like free play, uh, the protected pick up to $20. Right. Yeah. And so all last year, every time I would remember to do, to log in on Friday and, and grab it, um, I would always do like the max $20 and I would max out to the six pick to where if I'm, if I hit it, I'm going to win $540 and guess what? It never hit. Right. Not once. I didn't hit it once in the entire year. I've been you using know? it like two years. I've hit it one time. Yeah. So I'm like, why don't I like, if I just do the, the three, a three man, you know, I can even take like the goblins, which are, you know, less risk and do a three man goblin and I'll double it. I'll I'll start with yeah. twenty bucks and I'll have forty. If five like, bucks turns into ten bucks, that's dumb. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like I'm like man, I gotta I gotta bet smarter. You posted that one on the goblins or whatever that you hit. Yeah, that's like, the way hey, I dude, hit this week. You tripled your money, dude. Tripling yeah. your money is never yeah. bad, dude. It doesn't matter if you're tripling two dollars or twenty dollars, man. Tripling your money is tripling your money. Yep. Exactly, and I'm I'm not gonna tempt fate and and read that out loud, but. <laughs> I do. I have. No, it sucks. You bring me to any casino, dude, across my entire life. I have absolutely no luck, bless you. But you bring me to any casino, and I can't stop winning. But apparently, because I'm not in a casino, sports gambling is the opposite for me. It's my normal luck because I'm not in a casino, so I just lose all the time. I can't fucking <laughs> seem to hit it right. Well, boys, Ray, thanks for subbing in on for dabs. I didn't even address that in the beginning of the show. Wait, that's but, not dabs? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you looked weird without your glasses on, dude. I just it's thought you took so your spider and your glasses off, so and that's what you normally look like. It's because you're so hot. <laughs> Wait, no, no. He didn't talk about the Titans all day. That's yeah, right. So it's not dabs. Titans are bad. That's all you need to know. <laughs> oh, it is dabs. It is dabs. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, well, gentlemen, if you'll pull up your Twitch dashboards, let's uh, find a raid oh, yeah. target to send all these beautiful people off to. Um, hey, my girl Vel's streaming. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no simping. Oh, no simping. <laughs> I don't know who I'm watching after we get off here. I'm watching a lethal dose of NyQuil. And fast traveling to work tomorrow. There you go, dude. Fast traveling to boy. work tomorrow. <laughs> Is that a Fallout reference? How do I raid? Oh, uh, there's a little. Well, you can actually just type it in your chat. Uh, uh, slash raid, and then whoever we decide to raid. Uh, I was thinking IB is on. He was in here earlier and chatting oh. it up at the beginning of the sh- of the show. If you want to, if y'all want to raid him. Send him That's a podcast raid. Right? Oh, yeah. I'm seeing a lot right now. Really, it's like IB or Kano. So I'm down for IB always. We got airborne on too, but yeah, IB was in here hanging out. Guys, so, if you're still hanging out with us, thank you so much for being here tonight and uh, show the IB next streamer. IBTVE, by the way. Yeah, IBTVE. Um, show IBTV some love. I IB is a great dude. He's hanging out with us earlier. He's a Minnesota fan. Don't hold that against him. Um, because that's just where he lives. All right. I just talked to him. Yeah, IBTVE. There's two E's on the end. So, yeah. Yeah, show him some yeah. love because he also not to get into the whole story, but he also almost got slapped by Adrian Peterson. So you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Adrian Peterson lived down the street from him growing up. Some stuff happened. Adrian Peterson let himself into Ivy's house, was going to smack him, and then Ivy's mom walked up screaming. Talking happened, and uh, that was the end of it. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 All right, guys, go say hi to IB. We'll catch y'all next week. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, wait, wait, I actually got to hit the raid button first. That might help. Got it? Oh, yeah, got it. there we go.